Hi, Yi. How are you? Hey, Peter. How's it going? Good, good. So you feel a lot better after you finish qualify exam duty, right? <laughs> you know, I, I feel that I just, well, I, I was just taking my qualify exam. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, actually, uh, uh, yesterday at 9 a.m., uh -huh. I really thought I had a heart attack. Uh-huh. Wow. Really you know, I, uh, I, I could not breathe, you know. I, uh, it, it, actually, the symptom is more severe than COVID-19. Oh. <laughs> because you were reviewing your slides, uh, you scared of the analysis uh, result? No, wow. <laughs> no the, you know, that, like a, you know, that Zoom, Zoom meeting actually was not acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll say if we have heart attack at the end of your presentation today. Uh, <laughs> no, this is supposed to be fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Certainly, yeah. Look forward to it. I will thank mute you. myself anyway. So, thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. So, so actually, you, you made a very uh, good introduction, you know, to, to the model. So, uh, so actually, I, 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 you know, I could skip a lot of details. Uh -huh. um, yeah, thank you, Peter. So that's why I, I want to book my uh, my talk immediately after yours. <laughs> you always make the right decision in your life. Oh, this is how you make me really jealous. <laughs> no way. <laughs> but anyway, so we end up in the same place as colleagues. So, so. I think that's the best decision. <laughs> you made, I made. <laughs> yeah, if you want, I guess I can give you a quick, well, I'll just give the inter introduction just so uh, people, I think it seems to, exp yeah, it seems to have exponential growth of, of individuals arriving from 330 to 335. So why don't we just, I'll give the introduction and then you can just quickly start. So. Today, we're happy to have Yi give a talk on additional sort of COVID-related uh, uh, work um, on estimation of time-varying reproduction numbers. And as I said last week, you know, it's, it, we're hoping it'll be a casual um, seminar. So we're hoping that people will chime in with questions. And, you know, if you, if you want, I will leave my video on. Um, but if you don't feel comfortable leaving your video on, that's okay, too. Um, and the only thing I ask of is uh, Yi is I might pause around four o'clock just to see if there's any questions, just because I know Zoom gets a little uh, uh, difficult for people to ask their questions in real time. So at like four o'clock-ish, I might just see if there's any questions and pause. But other than that, uh, we'll have Yi give a great talk. And uh, uh, yes, thanks again, Yi, for signing up. Okay, um, thanks, Water, and uh, thanks, Peter, for the invitation. So. I'm very happy to uh, to be here to present something, you know, I'm I'm doing while I have nothing to do. Um, so I also want to just, uh, uh, you know, thank our students uh, who took the qualified exam yesterday. <laughs> thank you very much for your patience. And really, I hope you enjoy your day and enjoy the rest of the summer. And also, uh, I want to also thank our colleagues, you know, for working so hard, you know, for the uh, qualified exam. So. Okay, so today I'm gonna talk about, uh, uh, you know, the research related to uh, COVID-19. So in particular, I am gonna talk about, uh, you know, the estimation of the reproduction number associated with COVID-19. And I, again, this, you know, this talk is supposed to be informal and uh, I would welcome any questions. So feel free to interrupt me anytime and also, uh, even after uh, my talk, you feel free to contact me if you feel there's something you want to discuss with me. Okay, so um, just want to give a status quo of uh, COVID-19. Um, so right now, the cumulative number of uh, COVID-19 uh, has surpassed 4 million in this country, and the CDC has recommended wearing masks when you are around the people who are not living with you and also stay six feet away from the others and also wash your hands often. So I hope, you know, our people are, you know, obeying this. 
Okay, so um, just a, a little a bit of introduction to, uh, to COVID-19 or, or the virus. So we, we heard about the coronavirus all the time. So actually coronavirus actually are a broad family of uh, RNA viruses. And uh, they are widely harbored in animals. Mostly actually, we, people heard actually the coronavirus actually are harbored in bats. So most of coronavirus actually cause mild, mild uh, in infections, but the, um, this SARS-CoV-2 Initi initiated the uh, contagious and the uh, lesser uh, coronavirus disease or so-called COVID-19 in December uh, 2019. So after the first case was observed in Wuhan, China, the pandemic has evolved into a global crisis within only, four, uh, within only two months. So as of uh, uh, two days ago, the virus has already uh, infected uh, 17 million individuals and caused uh, uh, 670,000 uh, deaths uh, in the world. Okay, so the, the, the data sources actually uh, I, we used in this um, proposal, uh, in, in, in this project actually is a, a data repository uh, in GitHub. So this GitHub actually uh, combines information from a variety of sources. For example, uh, WHO, John Hopkins, uh, DXY, uh, National Health Commission of China, and the US CDC or so on. Yeah, actually, I, I, I also click on you know, the lesson here, actually it's still active today. So. Okay, so today actually, um, I, I hope actually, uh, at the end of the talk, actually, uh, I, 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 we will be able to achieve the goals I would like to set up to here. So basically, I want to characterize how contagious the virus is. And also, I would like to describe and understand the change trend of the pandemic. And also, I want to just uh, briefly uh, uh, talk about an interactive web, web application uh, we developed uh, you know, for describing the trend of the pandemic. Okay, so my, 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 fo my focus today, just as reflected uh, in my title of my presentation, is a so-called basic is a reproduction number. So uh, if you look at the literature, this reproduction number is always denoted by R0 or R0. So this is a term uh, indicating how contagious an infectious disease is. So actually, it describes the average number of a people that one infectious case will infect during the lifespan of virus, you know, or the virus is still active. So the larger the number, the more contagious the disease is. Well, uh, so what is the implication of R0? So for example, if R0 is less than one, this means each case will only uh, cause less than one new infection and then the spread of the disease will decline and eventually die out. When this R0 is equal to one, then each case will cause uh, you know, one new infection, basically just pass this virus to a, a new person. And then the disease will still uh, uh, stay alive, but stable, and then there's no outbreak. So if R0 is greater than one, then each case will cause more than one new infections. The, the number of cases will increase exponentially, and then there is gonna be an outbreak. Okay, so now actually we can also put the, uh, you know, the uh, R0 of COVID-19 in a context. So uh, as reported by this article, uh, reported uh, by Centric, the R0 for COVID-19 uh, is estimated to be 5.7, so which means each infectious case will transmit the virus to five or six people. And uh, actually different countries reported uh, different R now. So just to give you a context. So for example, the Ebola actually has an R now uh, around the two. Um, and then uh, SARS, which uh, uh, hit China and the world uh, almost uh, 15 years ago, uh, had R now four. And then the mumps uh, got R now uh, 10. So, uh, COVID-19 is sort of between them. And the measles actually is the most contagious disease 
with uh, R now uh, more than 18. Okay, so the, the, the model actually we are gonna talk about today actually is the so-called uh, susceptible infectious removed model. So uh, Peter actually talked about this model uh, last time, uh, that was very, very good uh, introduction. So today I will also talk about uh, this model uh, from a, a different perspective. So th 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 this model actually explains the rapid rise and uh, the fall of the infected individuals um, you know, within a population. So uh, the, the, the model actually has a three compa compartments the susceptible, which means that they are healthy uh, individuals, but they may uh, get infections, you know, sooner or later. And also the eye compartment contains the active infectious uh, cases, and R contained the so-called removed cases, uh, which can, uh, consists of uh, recovered or, or dead people, you know, the people dying from the disease. Okay, so then you can see the dynamic here. So susceptible will be uh, transmitted uh, be into the infectious and then infectious will, you know, either die or recover. Okay, so this is the dynamic. So the beta, so actually we, we, the, the dynamic of between those two, uh, the, the three uh, compartments actually are described by the uh, some parameters. So, for example, transmission uh, rate beta uh, actually con uh, connects the from susceptible to infectives. So, this is uh, uh, this actually characterizes the number of individuals that an infectious case in infects per unit time. And then the gamma describes you know how to get go from the infectives to removed. So gamma actually is the remove rate. This is the rate at which infected individuals recover or die. Okay, and actually one over gamma also means the expected length of time until removal or the expected length of the infectious period. So the, the, this is the interpretation of those two parameters which turned out to, uh, to be very important for our later development. Okay, so I'll just uh, briefly talk about the notation and also uh, for this model, actually we also have a so-called closed population assumption. So um, denote our population uh, size is N and then uh, our, we use ST here to, to denote, capital ST here to denote the, the number of the susceptible uh, individuals at the time T and then capital IT denotes the number of in, uh, active infectious cases at time T and then RT here uh, contains the number of removed cases at time T, okay? And then the little, the lower case uh, corresponds to the proportions, you know, uh, out of the total population. Okay, so the closed population assumption means actually uh, during this time period, there's no, no births, there's no deaths uh, other than you know, the deaths due to the COVID-19, so for example. So as a result, all those uh, numbers add up to the total population size and all the proportions add up to one. Okay, so this is uh, the basic assumption for this model. Okay, so this model actually was uh, first uh, proposed by Kermack and uh, Mike Kendrick uh, in 1927. Um, so I, I would think this perhaps this is a, a most uh, important model in infectious disease uh, research. Actually, uh, in the paper, uh, Mike Kendrick and Kermack actually uh, describes the, the dynamic of the uh, of this infectious disease, actually in particular, they even have a, like a sort of a closed form for this I and S. Well, actually this so-called pseudo of a closed form is a solution to this uh, so-called dif uh, differential equation based SIR. So uh, th th this is a dynamic described by the ordinary differential equations. And then you can see the beta, beta here, and then you will see the gamma here. So actually then 
the solution here actually, the, there's a solution here actually is here, but then the constant here really depends on the initial value of this uh, uh, differential equation. Okay, so here they just give the, the example of the projected trajectories uh, with an uh, SIR. So for example, uh, we, uh, with beta equals to 0.5 and gamma equals to 0.15 and then with the initial condition, and then you can see the, this is the trajectory of the susceptible, basically the, the most eventually with this, with this rate, eventually a, a majority of the population will get infected and then, um, and then most of them actually will get recovered or, or, or removed, all right? And then this green here refers to the uh, active uh, infectious uh, cases. Eventually they will also uh, become zero. So this just gives the trajectory of, the, uh, of this SIR model uh, under uh, a constant beta and gamma. Okay, so um, so based on the SIR, actually we can we can define the, the so-called R now. Okay, so basically the R now here can be can be defined to be uh, the uh, the ratio between beta and gamma. Okay, actually uh, this ratio actually defines the average number of the people infected by one infectious individual during the infectious period. So. Uh, th th this paper, Gura uh, 2017, uh, Nancy the paper actually give a very nice introduction to uh, to this R now. Okay. Okay. So uh, w one thing I just will remind people of is the R now actually depends on both transmission and the removal rates. Okay. And also. Uh, it, it is actually it's very important because it's, uh, it characterizes an epidemic and provides an early warning for pandemic. Okay, so, um, so what, why estimating R now actually is important for COVID-19? Because you know, good estimates are key to answer you know, the following questions. So for example, how fast will COVID-19 spread you know, how many hospital beds and uh, ventilators are needed, you know, how many personnel we need to deploy to, to hospitals or so on, and uh, when to lift lockdowns and go back to normal, or if there is a normal at, after all. Okay. So um, th th there's always, uh, you know, some, some, some uh, key ideas or the, some misconceptions about R now. So, the R now actually is quite uh, difficult to, uh, to, to track because it depends not only on the biological characteristics of a virus, it also depends on how often people contact with each other. So, uh, but you know, normally actually, you, you know, uh, before, you know, people tend to think actually R now is only a, a fixed property of a virus, basically it's just purely by de determined by the biological property of a virus. And also R now actually can differ, uh, you know, drastic, drastically uh, between countries, cities, states, neighborhoods, or across different time periods, you know, as reported in the literature. And also actually there's uh, some more challenges with uh, in in infectious disease modeling. So for example, how to model the dynamic epidemiological process due to the disease control actions. Because you know, uh, uh, policy makers or people do intervene you know, when outbreak is uh, identified. And also uh, how to account for the random errors in reporting you know, the number of uh, cases and uh, uh, recovered uh, cases or so on. And then how to, uh, characterize the uncertainty of uh, predictions. Th th those are all the issues with the uh, infectious uh, disease modeling. Okay, so I will just uh, briefly talk about, uh, uh, you know, our work uh, in, uh, in, in, in this field. So, so our work actually basically here uh, con considers a time-dependent SIR model. Okay, so the rationale is the transmission and the, the removal rates actually are time dependent. They are not constant. And as a result, the R now actually is 
so are time dependent on uh, uh, and can also uh, measure the status of the coronavirus spread and also can assess the effectiveness of the virus control strategies. And also, we, we want to just uh, talk about uh, use uh, statistical models in, instead of only just use uh, deterministic differential equation models. So this way, actually, we will be able to uh, accommodate possible random errors in reporting. And then we can also quantify the uncertainty of the predicted uh, trend of uh, epidemia, uh, epidemic. OK, so th th this, this is a formulation of the time varying uh, SIR model. So in, in, uh, in this model, now the beta and the, uh, you know, again, the beta is the transmission rate from the susceptible compartment to the infective compartment. And then the gamma actually is the removal rate from the infective compartment to the removed uh, compartment. So these are the two uh, rates. And then in, 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 this, in this model, actually the beta and the gamma all depends on T. So, uh, so th th this is a modification, you know, from the original uh, 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 SIR model. So now the, all the beta and the gamma here actually uh, depends on time. So, so why we want to do this? Actually, with this formulation, actually, uh, if we just reconsider the ratio between the beta and the gamma, and now we can define this so-called time-varying reproduction number, Okay, so this time varying reproduction number, so after some uh, little algebra, is approximately equal to the uh, di dr uh, plus one. So this di dr t actually is just the ratio of the change rate of i t relative to that of r t. So it just uh, measures the, the, the relative change rate you know, between the two compartments. Okay, so with this, this time dependent uh, R now is an instantaneous reproduction number. It provides a real time picture of an outbreak. Um, so for example, at the onset, you will see a rapidly increasing number of cases. And also during that time, you know, very, uh, very few cases actually will recover. So as a result, in the beginning of the epidemic, you may see that R now uh, to be very large. And then after the uh, outbreak is identified, you know, people may intervene. And then you may see actually a drastically a decreasing uh, this quantity. As a result, the R now here may also uh, decrease. So the turning point here is uh, T0, uh, T where this R, R, R now actually becomes one. So this means actually the outbreak actually is controlled. Okay, actually before, uh, I, I tend to think actually, uh, you know, for, uh, for, for, for this pandemic, we will only just see one turning point, but it turns out actually uh, this pandemic can have, you know, multi-mode instead of a union mode. So I think actually this is something uh, I unexpected before. Okay, so be because this uh, uh, SIR actually, uh, the original, original SIR was, uh, def uh, was uh, def uh, defined uh, with respect to the continuous T. And in reality, actually all those T here are actually are measured in days. So uh, we, uh, we, we just consider the so-called discrete time varying SIR. So in here, our T is measured in days. And then uh, now we, instead of using the uh, derivative, we just use a finite, finite difference to, uh, to characterize the dynamic of the, the I compartment and the R, R compartment. So you should notice here, I only use this I and R. I didn't use S because they add up to one. So I only just uh, need to choose only two out of three. Okay, and also uh, in order to uh, fully specify this model, you, you, you also need to specify the initial condition. So uh, R I zero means the number of the init initial cases and R zero here is the uh, number of the initial removed uh, cases. 
Okay, and also because actually our um, okay, so water. Maybe I should pause for uh, for questions. I think yeah, I think uh, Jeremy had one question. Jeremy, oh really? Okay. Um, Jeremy, go ahead. What's your question? Yes, um, I guess I put it in chat, so I don't know if you see it there, but no, I can't see it. Okay, so the SIR model doesn't it? sort of have an assumption of like random homogeneous mixing of people. And so, you know, everyone has sort of an equal chance of infecting everyone else, but, but it does that, it does that, so it's probably not true that, but does that, so does that, the fact that it's probably not true, does that mess up sort of the usefulness and interpretation of R naught? Yeah, that, that, that could be, yeah. So Jeremy, actually this is a very, very good question. So, so basically, you know, if you look at this SIR model, it assumes actually a homogeneous population. So, so you know, again, so here we, um, if you want to consider, you know, this model in more detail, so probably you do need to think about the population actually is a heterogeneous population instead of homogeneous population. So I would think here, uh, based on, based on uh, this definition here, this is sort of like the population average. So I'm, so here, this is not a, a, about, you know, uh, R naught with respect to, you know, uh, middle age people, R naught with respect to male, R naught with respect to the female, so on. So, yeah. Basically, you know, this is population average. Yeah. Okay, so does that answer your question, Jeremy? I cannot hear you, Jeremy, you are on mute. It's a bit hard to pin down what it means really, I think, R naught. So I it's think. usually population average. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's population average. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, I, I think your yeah, Jeremy actually, this is a very good one actually. I, I, I probably will talk about more, you know, this later, so. Okay, so if no more questions, I'll just uh, keep going. Okay, so um, so here is just some a little bit uh, uh, technical detail here because here we uh, we model beta and gamma non parametrically. So uh, our proposal is just to use the uh, cubic spline. So and also. Uh, one thing uh, I want to remind people here is the beta and the gamma here uh, have to be uh, uh, non-negative or have to be positive. So as a result, actually, we just use, uh, first do the log, we link this log beta and log gamma uh, to the uh, basis expansion of the uh, cubic disk lines. And then uh, our unknown parameters actually in our model are just the uh, coefficients corresponding to the cubic disk line uh, functions. Okay, so certainly actually we, we have heard actually uh, there's always uh, some uh, data errors uh, in uh, COVID-19 cases or so on. So that's why I, I, I think actually if you just only use the de deterministic model, uh, it may not be uh, so helpful. So, so that's why uh, our strategy is to introduce the uh, a statistical model, uh, well, in particular, because actually we're dealing with a count. So a natural model is a Poisson, uh, is a Poisson uh, model. So we use the Z here to denote the uh, ZI, ZR here to denote the reported or the observed number of infectious and remove the cases. And then the lower case Z uh, corresponding to the reported proportions. And then the I and R actually denoted like sort of like the truth numbers of the infectious and remove the cases. Okay, and then we assume you know the Z, uh, the observed uh, data are just the uh, following a Poisson distribution with the mean of RT and IT respectively. So basically, we uh, the, the the big assumption we we made here is the reported numbers are just uh, the random error here are just the purely uh, white noise. Okay, so with this, actually we can uh, do the uh, 
we can do the estimation. So actually we can just uh, uh, formulate the likelihood. Actually, this is just the Poisson likelihood. And then you, you either just maximize the original likelihood or actually uh, we, or you just maximize the log likelihood. Actually, I think the maximized log likelihood actually uh, is more convenient. Okay, and then once uh, once you do the uh, formulate this, you can estimate all those uh, uh, beta and gamma uh, corresponding to the coefficients of the basis functions, and then you can then you can estimate the beta and the gamma beta t and the gamma t, and then you can also estimate the r naught t. Okay, and then. Uh, and also based on this here, you will be able to estimate uh, the, uh, the, 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 the number of uh, uh, infectious cases and the, the remove the cases, you know, just by, uh, by using the estimates. So basically by using this, you can even do, uh, do, do some prediction. Okay, and then uh, you, if you want to uh, go, go further, you can even uh, do uh, to draw inference. So, because this is a parametric model, actually, uh, you can uh, estimate the variance and the covariance of your uh, estimates by inverting the Hitchin matrix. And then all the beta, gamma t, and r now, and then your, your, your predictions here are just the, the smooth functions of your uh, estimates. And then you can just apply the delta method to draw inference. And then you can even calculate the confidence intervals you know, for, your, for your estimates. So I, I, I think this is a sort of advantage of using the statistical model. Okay, so now actually I, I, I will just talk about the applications. I think this is a, perhaps this is the most interesting part. Okay, so we are gonna uh, apply our method to assess the epidemiological process of COVID-19 uh, for various countries. You know, the, those countries actually are just random chosen. And then the, 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 the uh, you know, when we, uh, the final revision of this paper actually was done just before June. So actually the, then the results actually, uh, we use the data uh, until uh, May 26. Okay, so we, we, we had this uh, population because actually for the capital N here, uh, um, you, you can see that we, we got uh, the data from the, from the internet and then you will see the population size for China, India, uh, United States or so on. Right? So that's not the issue. Okay, the only, the only issue here is you know, identify capital N is not an issue, but what would happen if the initial data actually were bad? Because actually the the SIR model, if you just uh, look at the literature, uh, especially the articles published in mathematical biology, there are tons of papers talking about uh, how, to, uh, how to develop or how to extend the SIR model. But for all those models here, uh, the deterministic model require the very accurate assessment of I0 and uh, R, R0. So the, those are just the initial values of the infected and the removed cases. But actually in the very beginning of the, uh, uh, of, of the uh, pandemic or, or uh, epidemic, the, those initial values here actually can be very, uh, can be very incorrect. Right, so so that's why we, we, we just did a little bit uh, uh, simulation. So the, the, the red curve here corresponds to the deterministic. So with the true value of the beta and the true value of gamma, but with uh, the uh, misspecified initial value of uh, R, I0 and R0. And then you will see actually then, <clears throat> the, then basically actually the model here, uh, if, if your initial value is misspecified, actually the, the bias actually will be huge. But uh, if you just use a statistic model, well, even if the initial values here were bad, actually it doesn't matter. Actually, you know, the statistic model can accommodate, actually can, can tolerate some, some measurement error. Okay. So that's why this is the advantage of using the statistical uh, models. 
Okay, so uh, we also uh, considered, uh, so th this, this is a just comparison between the, uh, the, the, the results of the US and the China. So if, what we did here is we, based on our model, we can, uh, uh, we can calculate, we can estimate the uh, IT, capital IT, uh, again, capital IT here, this is the number of the um, infectious, uh, case, case, uh, infectious cases uh, on, on T and RT here is the number of uh, removed cases at, at time T. Okay, and then based on our model, we can also have a, a beta T and a gamma T and also we, we have this R, R naught, okay, which is a time dependent uh, uh, reproduction number. Okay, so the the left left panel refers to U.S. data, and then the right panel here refers to uh, to the China data. Okay, and then you know again actually um, uh, again th th this result actually was obtained uh, uh, in uh, in the in the end of May. Okay, actually in the end of May you will see here actually. We 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 kind of actually based on this model, based actually not based on the data, we actually see some the, the curve actually has been flattened. So the R now actually oh you 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 just uh, find actually actually the uh, the R now here is around like the March fourteen actually March fourteen the R now actually be almost uh, like a twenty or something. I, I, I don't know if uh, people still remember March 14. So March 14 actually is uh, when actually we, we were asked to go back home, to work from home in, in, in this country, actually in, even in Michigan. Okay, actually, uh, and then for, the, for, for, for China actually, we'll see actually, so probably the, the curve actually, uh, the peak actually uh, for the infectious case actually happened probably in the, uh, in the middle of uh, February, and so and then so you know this is a uh, so again we have this IT and RT for the China, and then not only we have uh, uh, you know based on our model we can also estimate the uh, uh, time dependent transmission rate and also time dependent the the, the gamma. So you can see here the, the, these are the trend of the beta T and the gamma T, and then we also have this. Uh, uh, are now for uh, for China. Okay, so I also want just to talk about uh, Sweden. Actually, Sweden is a very interesting country. So, because uh, Sweden actually is, is taking uh, the so-called uh, herd immunity uh, strategy. So people are talking about actually how 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 effective the the strategy is. So we we look at the Sweden actually. We also look at the. Um, uh, how, how this is, how this uh, Sweden uh, is, is doing? So you can see here, based on um, oh, by the way, actually we can also uh, so this is a for the Sweden here. This is our this is the IT. Okay, the um, the the blue here. The the blue dots here refers to the uh, to the true data, and then the red here uh, refers to our prediction. So you can see here the the blue and the red actually uh, overlap actually quite well. So this actually indicates our, our model actually is, is fine. And then you can see basically you can see the uh, for the Sweden actually they have a R now has a peak probably around the. Uh, Probably around March, and then uh, around the June, actually the, the Sweden actually is, is doing better, is doing is doing well. Okay, another country here actually is very interesting is Korea. So, Korea actually uh, uh, had a pandemic just uh, right after uh, the outbreak in China actually was observed. So you will see actually if you look at the R now for uh, for uh, for Korea. So we will see actually the R now actually in Korea probably around the fifty, uh, sort of just uh, w probably one week before March. Okay. So what happened there? So it turns out uh, uh, th this actually was caused by th this so-called. Uh, Xinchongji. So actually, I I I, I check internet. Actually, in Chinese, this is a Xintian Di. So there there's a secretive church, 
they, I think they had a party just one week before uh, March, which caused uh, more than uh, 5,000 uh, cases in Korea. So I, I, I think the, the, the head of the church even apologized to the whole country because of that. Okay, so uh, with this, actually, we, we also uh, calculated, calculated the R now for, for more countries here. So actually, we put uh, all those countries here on the same uh, time scale so that you can just compare uh, the, the, the change trend of the pandemic uh, across the countries. Okay, so uh, just as a li li little bit uh, exercise, we also, can I, yeah. Can I ask? So you, you talked about inference, so d you didn't put on the confidence intervals on those R0 oh. curves. Are they big or narrow or what? Oh yeah, I, I see what you mean. So, uh, so, so Jeremy, actually, I, I, I think we only put the confidence interval here for the uh, IT and RT, actually, I, I, yeah, actually, I, I, I'm supposed to also put the intervals on R now as, as well. Yeah, that's a that's a good uh, good question. So th this is on my to do list. Okay. Any other questions? May I ask a question? You so so the um, the R now seem quite high. So I I I, knew, I know that it makes sense to me that it would be spiking. Like I saw the U.S. one that you had was like a spike around twenty, mm -hmm. and I was just curious compared to other. Uh, R knots that people have estimated. Does this seem in line with those? Just because it seems like um, yeah. an R knot of twenty seems very, very high. I just, I, I, I have no idea of the scale, but that's that's a quite large number. No, this actually, this this is a very, very good question. So, so here we are talking about the instantaneous R now. So, so for the um, for the R now, you read about the literature. They are just the the average of the R now. So, for example, um, so for Korea. They had R now uh, probably like 50, one week before March. Okay, so for example, if this uh, uh, Shintendi church had this party on a daily basis, then Korea will have this 50 R now on a daily basis. Okay, so that's why this is really a time dependent. Okay, so then for the R now, you read from literature. I, you know, they are sort of like the average of the R now across the time spectrum. Gotcha. Okay. The only other, other question I had was just, I assume due to the, sp the spline model, that's why you have an R not below, it looks like below zero a little bit just because of the, 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 that there's that, I'm, I'm trying to, is the black line zero or is the black line one on the R One, one here. Okay. okay one here. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, yeah, one here, because actually the cutoff is one, because actually, uh, the, the premise here is if the R now is, uh, uh, is, is has dropped below one, this means uh, the epidemic is controlled, right? So okay. uh, that's why this one is uh, cut off. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any other questions before I move on? Okay, and anyway, so I, I will end soon. So I, I think there's a opportunity uh, for you to ask me more questions. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, just as a, a validation, we also just also test our model just to see how, um, in terms of prediction, how we can predict the future cases. What we did here is we use our data uh, up to, uh, for example, May 20th to develop our model. And then based on our model, we predict uh, you know, the future cases, you know, one week after. So, and then, and also we, you know, because we have the real data, we have the observed data. So we compare the observed versus the predicted. So, and then you can see here, um, for the first uh, uh, several days, I, I think the, the prediction actually is uh, good, but actually uh, once you are further away uh, from your data, actually the prediction yet become, become worse. Okay, actually we also uh, develop an interactive uh, web application. So th the application actually has a drop down menu, menu and then you can just uh, select the countries like Italy, US, uh, China. Actually, I just found actually today that China does not work. So I don't know what happened, but anyway, so then you will get the uh, 
uh, you will get all those parameter estimates and then you will get the, um, the predicted uh, uh, infectious cases and then remove the cases from this web application. Okay, so um, just to wrap up, um, I, so today actually I, I, I talk about the, um, the SIR model and also I talk about actually uh, based on the SIR model, we can derive some parameters which will help us to describe how contagious the, uh, the epidemic, the virus is. Um, but also there was something, uh, something actually that hasn't, uh, that haven't been addressed. So for example, uh, in, in this model, actually we, we consider that all those countries here are closed, right? Because here we really do not uh, allow the interactions, you know, uh, between countries. And so certainly actually um, th th this should be addressed. And also um, the, the timing of the public health interventions actually is very important. Um, but uh, because there's no such information available for the majority of the countries, so that's why we cannot really uh, uh, have this in information in our model. Okay, well, although our statistical model can tolerate uh, some data error to some extent, but still validity of results really uh, depending, depends on you know, the data transparency and accuracy. And uh, certainly actually we, we, we need more formal uh, model diagnostics. And uh, another thing here is actually um, our removed compartment included the, you know, the recovery and the death. Okay, so those are the two uh, totally different outcomes, but now, uh, you know, for the, for the estimation, you know, purpose here, we group them together. So the interpretation of this removal rate here was not very straightforward, you know, from the perspective of public health. And, uh, and then uh, in our model, we, we because of, uh, we do not have data, and uh, then we do not really consider the so-called exposed compartment. We also, we do not consider the, Asymptomatic compartment. So I think those are the things actually we should consider. Okay, so uh, in, in, in summary, actually, the containment of a COVID 19 recover, uh, re requires the, the joint effort of uh, healthcare workers, health policymakers, and the citizens. Okay, and then the, some uh, virus containment measures, such as uh, self quarantine social distancing shelter in place were executed at various phases by each country to prevent the spread of the virus. So the, 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 the timely and effective assessment of these actions actually is, is critical. So we think actually r now here, the time dependent r now here may provide a tool to evaluate them. Okay, another thing here I wanna just uh, point out here is the model-based short-term predictions here may be possible, but uh, long-term predictions are nearly impossible. So I, I don't think actually long-term predictions are uh, possible. Okay, so uh, th there are also some other important uh, considerations. Uh, uh, for example, the, the, the deaths, the hospitalizations, uh, quality of life, uh, racial disparities, and uh, and also uh, how this COVID nineteen impacts you know on e economy. Okay, so those are the very important considerations you know we we should consider. Okay, and certainly for for everybody actually everybody in your mind here is when this mess is gonna be over, right? So for example, to them, I'm thinking so so far are we really at the ending of the beginning or the beginning of the ending or perhaps beginning of the beginning. So I, I don't know. Okay, so the, uh, the, 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 the presentation actually uh, here actually was largely based on a recently uh, published article uh, on PLUS ONE. Um, so I, I think if you, if you Google this, actually this is online and actually we, we, we submitted this paper in, uh, in March, and then actually the plus one actually uh, 
just give, ask us to do a lot of revisions. So actually, there are several uh, versions uh, posted on our archive. So there's a version one, two, three. So actually, I, I, I like the version one better, actually. So that's why I, so you, 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 can, uh, you can find those three versions. And then we also uh, develop an online app. So I think this is, okay, so I, you can still see this here. So uh, I hope the internet is still working here. So, so you can see here, so this online app here. So if you drop, there's a drop down um, main, uh, menu here, you can select the countries. And then once you select the countries, you will be able to, for example, get those uh, time dependent uh, transmission rate, the removal rate, the infectious cases, or so on. So I, I think this is a, yeah, this is a US cases. Okay, so, so this is uh, actually at the begin, well, in the, in the end of May, this is where we were. So I, I, I saw that actually we already reached the, the peak. So actually the R now actually really touched, touched one. But then after that, the infectious cases then just keeps rising. So now I feel actually we may just reach another peak, but then who knows, you know this. So that's why I, I think this is not really a union mode uh, um, uh, curve. Okay. okay, so with that, I think I really, uh, you know, thank, thank you for your patience. And uh, then I would uh, welcome any questions you might have. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, if anyone has a question, you can either raise your hand or just turn on your mic and ask it or just put it in the chat. Otherwise, I, I'll just wait a second before asking my question, I guess. <laughs> can I ask another question? Of course. Well, actually, more, more than one, I guess. So you could easily ex I guess I'm, I'm a little suspicious of a Poisson assumption really doesn't capture the heterogeneity in the daily counts, but you could easily use a negative binomial or something, something that sort of was a little more flexible right. and that might have some, hmm. some impacts on the whips of the confidence intervals, I would think. It probably hmm. won't change the, mm -hmm. the mean estimates too much. So the confidence intervals, I guess I want to come back to that. So when you okay. think about the r naught curve over time, presumably the intervals are super wide at the end of the time and less wide early on. Is that true? And also I'm a little, I'm also <laughs> thinking that the time when R0 was high was because the denominator was like near zero. So there's presumably uh, massive uncertainty about yeah. the height of that peak as well. So. Yeah, I agree, I agree actually. So to, to address your first question, so, uh, you know, the Prasong, uh, Prasong was chosen because uh, actually uh, because of convenience and also again Prasong is a natural model for um, for accommodating count data. Okay, so so that's why Prasong uh, is a natural choice. But uh, is that the best choice? Probably probably not because you know I, I don't know which model really uh, fits the data best. Um, but still, uh, based on our um, you know, the prediction performance, I, I, I think actually if you look at the, all the predictions here, so it looks like actually the predicted value actually um, fit the overlap with the true value uh, quite well. So to some, to some extent, uh, I, I think the, the model fits well. And then I, I yeah, I, I didn't try this negative, um, negative uh, binomial uh, model as, uh, as suggested, so, but maybe I should try, but. Uh, um, okay, another thing here is actually, I, um, yeah, I, I didn't, uh, you know, I, yeah, cause actually I, I didn't have time to, uh, to, to draw or to calculate the, the confidence interval for R now. Yeah, I, as I probably in the beginning, in, in the beginning of the uh, ep epidemic because of the information, is the scars. So I would suspect that, you know, the, uh, the confidence interval of the R now here can be wide. So, uh, so I think it really depends on the data. So. Okay. Any Jeremy, other? As I say, you, Jeremy, you said you had a couple of questions. I don't know if you, you want to know. Oh, I, I can keep going. You want me to ask a question? <laughs> 
I, 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 I'll keep going, Red. So, uh, so wouldn't you expect the <laughs> removal process, right? Uh, of remove the I, the I to R, to be sort of constant over time. I mean, uh, that's like recovery time once you got infected. I mean, there haven't mm -hmm. been dramatic mm -hmm. improvements in treatments or anything mm -hmm. like that. So you wouldn't expect wild fluctuations in mm -hmm. in that. Whereas I would have thought the S to I right. department, there's been you know, a lot of sort of public right. health actions that might change more over time. So I don't know if that would be a way to yeah. you know, stabilize the estimation a little bit to make the removal yeah. one fairly, fairly, very smooth or flat. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, you know, Jeremy, actually, I, I think that really, de really depends on, you know, the hypothesis, actually, you know, for example, whether the, the removal, you know, the, for example, the treatment actually, you know, as, you know, people are more experienced with dealing with COVID-19, perhaps the removal rate will become larger or so on, right? So in that, in, in that case, actually, the a time dependent assumption on gamma actually perhaps makes sense. But on our hand, you know, no matter what you try here, perhaps this um, treatment here just uh, still has a constant uh, impact on COVID-19. So, well, that may trigger, you know, us to just to assume a, a time independent gamma. So uh, to tell you the truth, actually, we are indeed investigating just only assume beta to be time dependent while just uh, keeping gamma as a constant. So actually this, this is what uh, we are doing right now. I will, perhaps I can uh, share uh, the result of, you know, with the people. Thank you. Any more questions? Jeremy, I think I, I got used to answer your question. So why don't you just go <laughs> in? So. No, I'm just teasing. So, water. I, I think you are eager to Yeah, I, I was going to say, unless I'm just checking to see if anyone in chat had a question. So I, I had one question, and then I, 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 well, I might ask two, but I'll ask one. Um, so, mine was just the early on in the in the pandemic, right? So, you in your early in, I don't know about Sweden, but in the U.S., for example, mm -hmm. testing capacity was quite low compared to case counts. So your ability to measure, you know, and then we, we ramped up testing mm -hmm. uh, at whatever rate. And mm -hmm. I was just trying to see or understand how that might impact. So, so right now yours doesn't, so, cause you had mentioned something about measurement error and being robust to that, but, but I couldn't, mm -hmm. but I, I, I missed what part of the measurement error you were going to be robust to. Was it just the initial value or was it oh. other things like testing and, and, yeah. and, so good, Walter. I I I I think this is a very important uh, question to uh, address. So, so th the simulation I I posted here actually only just refers to the initial value here. What happens here? So, I didn't. Uh, um, I I made a disclaimer here. So we. We, we, we didn't talk about the, for example, some uh, asymptomatic compartment. So for example, whether, you know, the cases actually were detected simply because, you know, we wrap up the testing. So, uh, so certainly actually this, this is some, something, you know, we can consider, but with this, I would think actually then this really means your R now here may have a different interpretation. So depending on different time, time periods. So, so that's why, so for example, here you can see here, maybe this R now here really depends on the systematic, you know, to all the, the, the people with the symptom, okay? And here they probably just, the R now here just driven by, you know, the cases detected by the procedures. Okay, so, so that's why this just uh, further reinforce the notion of using this so-called time-dependent R now rather than just uh, consider this R now here as a fixed constant. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Well, if, if Jeremy, I guess, doesn't have more questions, <laughs> or, I, or I, I guess. Well, I have a, uh, oh. oh, Nick, you got a question? Hi, Nick. I just had a, I, I just had a quick question, if I can. Uh -huh. and, uh, no, just this point about, I think you have this uh, kind of ZI of T is like the kind of reported number of infections 
is Poisson uh, mean at I of t? To me, that seems this one here. Right? Quite, that right. doesn't really seem quite reasonable to me. I would think the z i of t would be like Poisson with some smaller fraction of i of t. I feel like there's a lot of people that are infectious, but they never get kind of in the system or reported anywhere. I mean, I guess it's hard to yeah. know exactly how many, but I would think I, that would be. Uh, I, 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 I think so. I, 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 well, um, what I actually, so for you, I, I, so basically you, you, you are questioning here whether this is reasonable or not. Well, yeah, I would I, think you would have like a Poisson of, I would think know it, exactly, but like 0 0.3 times I of T is something. Could be. Uh, that yeah. changes things. Could be, but I uh, my, my best guess here, I don't know that number, so my this is my I put a one here, but certainly actually we I don't know if we, we can extend this to uh, to, uh, to to make the this model be uh, further flexible, but uh, uh, maybe that this is the way we can try, but I'm I'm not sure. But yeah, Nick, I, I uh, to tell you the truth, actually th th this this part here um, is. Um, Basically, we just treat this z i here. Um, any any error, for example, between this reported number and then the two cases here, the error here just the white noise. Okay, so that's our b our big assumption, right? Whether this holds or not, who knows? But I think this is a, um, this may not be the good one, but perhaps this is the best one I can I can guess. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess if there's no more questions, um, we can end there. Thank you again to Yi for giving a, a, a talk, it was great. Um, and I will see you all next week. I forget who is speaking, but I will find that out and send that all out to you. So see you then. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much for your patience. Okay, see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.